everybody, tap tap here. You've probably already seen a billion overacted, ridiculous. Hello, Parker. Um, Nintendo Switch reaction videos. This isn't quite one of those, but I thought I'd throw my two cents in there for anybody who cares. I, uh, hi, Parker. I'm not sure Parker has an opinion on the Switch. He's a cat. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes. Um, anyway, overall, I really like it. So it's kind of what we expected. Um, it's, or perhaps what was leaked, so we knew to see, but, um, so what it is, it's a handheld that has removable little parts that you can use as a controller for a home console, and then you dock it. And a few people got some things wrong, like don't really understand quite what the deal is. Uh, the docking station really just is a charger and an HDMI output. Nintendo confirmed that to IGN. Uh, some people think it's like, oh, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna have more processing power on, in the dock. It's like that's not really. That is really hard to do and really expensive and requires a ton of per game programming and it's just, it's not a good way to go. Uh, it's it would be silly and it makes total sense they didn't do that. Um, so it's basically just always a portable console but it has a nice little dock to let you output to the uh, tv um in a lot of ways it's basically the successor to the vita except by nintendo if you look at the basic form factor it's kind of a larger vita it finally has um the thing i love about the switch is that it's a normal controller like everybody's saying oh it's a weird controller it's so interesting it's like actually it is the normalist controller like, on a mainline Nintendo console since, well, the NES, I guess? I mean, you know, back when they were setting the trend, they were setting what was normal back then. But uh, it, it has all the buttons of a PlayStation or Xbox controller. It has all the buttons in the same places as those controllers. It just allows you to put those on either a home console sort of pad with, you know, the dog controller, everyone calls it. Or the, uh, just slip them on the unit, kind of like a Vita's, you know, uh, form factor. And that's great. It's finally a Nintendo console that just, it lets me play the games. That's why I was, I talked about this a lot on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, you probably don't want to hear me rehash this. But every Nintendo system, hello Parker, since, um... Since the DS and Wii has had this little annoying, you know, gimmick, and it's like sometimes it's useful, and a lot of the times it just gets in the way. Um, there, there, there aren't anything like that with the Switch. I mean, maybe there's something unannounced. I mean, we did just get a three-minute trailer, but the controller looks totally standard except for the splitting, and the splitting does not seem to really affect the input aside from the two-player local co-op on a portable. That's that's pretty legit. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's limited, but I'm really hoping that if you could play with two people on the Pro Controller on one portable, that would be pretty awesome, because one of the things I've always found with portable consoles, I never play any local multiplayer with them, because you have to have, both of you have to have the same console, and the same game, and the game has to be in your card slot, or you have to carry, you know, rag, you know around a little bag full of game cards, which... I, I don't I don't do that. Um, I pretty much only pl ever played um, Animal Crossing and Pokemon locally because they're the only games I could expect people to have. Um, but with the NX, with the uh, with the Switch, that might be you know sort of a thing of the past uh, if things support you know local multiplayer with little tiny controllers. I'm a little less excited to be playing on you know just an analog stick and four buttons. But um, overall, it's just fantastic that. It's just, it's a normal controller with normal buttons. Um, one of the most annoying things about the Vita is that it, it's just slightly lacking in the button department. It doesn't have clickable sticks. It doesn't have the R2 and L2. Um, I don't really like the 3DS's um, solution for circle stick like or the C stick. Um, but the, Z, the ZL and ZR actually work surprisingly well for something that looks really, you know, tacked on. But the sticks didn't do it for me, so I'm really glad to see normal, clickable analog sticks, even on a portable. Um, one con I have a couple concerns about its actual portability, but the thing is, what I'm super excited about is I don't really like portable games. Um, I like 
Well, I don't like portable consoles. Let me put it that way. I love Pokemon. I love Animal Crossing. Um, I love the Mega Man games that for some reason have started being portable lately. Like, not even just the Mega Man. Like, uh, Gunvolt and Dark Witch 2 are, like, targeting 3DS as the primary console. It's like, why? My hands. It hurts my hands so much. Why do you do this to me? But with the Switch, I could just be like, hey, this game hurts my hands on, you know, the portable controls. So I'll just put it in the little dock and I'll get my pro controller and I'll play it with a freaking controller that doesn't give me arthritis when I'm 30. Um, it's fantastic. So, and it also lets them unify their developer output. So, you know, uh, which is good in two ways. In one way, it means, hey, if you only own one system, you get, you know, roughly twice as many games. You get all of the portable games and all of the console games. Plus, say that you are like me. You don't like portable consoles. You want to play everything on a home console. You really wish you could play Pokemon on a home console if you could. Well, now you can because your portable is your home console. Say you're the opposite. Say you're like, oh, I, I'm never home and I, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even own a TV, man. And, you know, you're always on the road because you're a hippie and uh, you just want to play everything portable. And you, you don't appreciate that all of the big 3D Zeldas are on the home consoles and you hate that. Well, now they're on your portable. That's that's pretty much the major pitch, and it's great. And everybody's talking about how weird and strange the controller and stuff. Like I said, it's a normal controller, and that's what's fantastic about it. It's, uh, you know, it splits and it's a little weird in that sense, but it has all of the buttons, and it'll work just like a normal controller. We don't even know if it's multi-touch. Um... Which Nintendo refused to comment on that. Uh, Nintendo is still being a little dumb. So I think hardware-wise, I'm almost certain they pretty much nailed it. They can still screw up in the software department. You know, they could have region locks. They could have, um, you know, they could make us rebuy the virtual console games again. They could, you know, they could do stupid stuff. Um, but Nintendo, the most annoying current thing is they apparently straight up said, uh, there's a journalist on Twitter I just retweeted just now, um, they said they're not going to say any more things about the Switch this year. So, I mean, this year's kind of almost over, but it's still two months. Like, all we got of NX this entire year is a three-minute trailer, which is kind of ridiculous. Especially since it's launching, what, in, like, spring next year? Parker, please. Um, so, yeah, and stuff like a region lock, that's a pretty big deal. Um, like, I've, I've got friends in Europe that are wondering, like, do I buy a European one or an American one? Because that's been a problem for them. Um, like, if you're in Japan or the U.S., you might not mind, or, you know, if you don't look at imports and stuff, you might not mind. But some regions, you know, get screwed out of games, or games come way late, especially for the 3DS, this has been a problem. Like, um... Like, I know people that have American 3DSs just because they um, they want the game sooner. And uh, prices could also be an issue, but, um, but yeah, Re region locking is a big deal. Um, the multi-touch, personally, I think having it have multi-touch would be a bad idea. Because the amazing thing about the Switch is that playing it as a portable and playing it as a home console, they're identical experiences except, you know... One, the controller configuration is slightly different, but all the same buttons. And one, the screen's, you know, a bit bigger. Um, and the problem is, if you have multi-touch, that means controlling it as a portable is different than controlling it on the home, you know, on the TV. And that means potentially there's stuff that's impossible when you're playing on the TV. Um, and that also means, you know, to avoid that, you have to double your inputs. You have to design everything totally separately. And going back to the Vita, this, to me, this feels pretty much exactly like what the PS Vita and the PS TV should have been. Because, like, the PS TV, I love the idea. It's really fantastic. But the biggest problem is the PS TV was introduced after the Vita. And it's not designed, like, the games weren't designed with TV in mind. So you get a bunch of games that aren't compatible, which, and part of that's fault, is Sony's fault for having even a whitelist. But uh, I don't really want to get too much into that issue. But basically, the PS TV would be really fantastic if they, say, they launched as, okay, this is the Vita TV and this is the Vita Portable. They play 100% the same games. Um, 
you can buy one game in one and download it on the other. Um, you know, just one's on a TV and you use a you know a DualShock Four. One's portable and you use you know the controls on that. And, you know, that's basically the idea of the Switch, except the Switch is just one unit, so that's even a better deal. But, um, but yeah, I love my PS TV, and I've been really glad I play almost all my Vita games that I can, which is most of them lately, on my PS TV. I use my normal controller. It allows me to record things, which is another thing I like about the Switch. Uh, I can't record crap on the 3DS because a capture card is $300, uh, plus, you know... I'd either have to let them deface my Majora's Mask new to 3DS or buy another 3DS, which is, you know, another 200 bucks. And I really don't have a ton of stuff that I want to record. Like, you know, it could be fun to stream Pokemon or, um, that sounds like a content ID a disaster waiting to happen. But I could stream, like, uh, Legend of Dark Witch, I actually really love. I've beaten that game like 10 times. Uh, it's coming to Steam eventually, but <laughs> it feels so dumb to not be able to record that. Um, so that, 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 this solves my problem, a lot of my problems with Nintendo hardware, um, all at once. And it's just so nice that, like, ev everything about the console just gets out of your way and lets you play games. And that's what all the trailer was all about. It was just people playing games. And no, oh, um, it's a new way to experience the video games. I'm waggling my fingers. Oh my gosh. No, it's just games. Nintendo really never needed all of the fancy gimmicks because look at the Wii U's best output. We've got we've got Splatoon, we've got Smash Bros, we've got Mario Maker, we've got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, we've got Super Mario 3D World. Almost none of those games really need the touchpad. Really, it's only Splatoon and Mario Maker that benefit at all from Wii U features. And with Splatoon, it's really just the map. A lot of people call in the gyro for the um, the thing for Splatoon. Here's a little secret. The DualShock 4 has a gyro. Everything has a gyro. Gyros are cheap. They're tiny. It's not a unique thing to include a gyro in a controller. In fact, the Wii or the, the Xbox One controller is currently the only major controller that does not have a gyro. The Steam controller has a gyro. Um, it's actually a really great addition. You just don't make it. You don't use it for everything. Like uh, the Wii and the PS3 briefly did. Um, you just use it where it's good. Um, and yeah, Mario Maker definitely benefits from the touchscreen. I don't think it would be impossible. It'd just be a little frustrating. But uh, I could see, I could see Mario Maker having a special multi-touch mode. But the thing is, I'm pretty sure backwards compatibility is not going to happen at all for the uh, Switch. Because I mean, how? Like, people are saying, oh, they're going to have to have the touch, multi-touch, for, you know, backwards compatibility. Um, it's only one screen. It, it, it can't really play any 3DS or Wii U games directly. Um, so what I think is going to happen is most of those games that I mentioned being the best of the Wii U, a lot of those are going to come over as enhanced ports. Like, it looked like Mario Kart 8 there and um, Splatoon... There could be new editions, but I kind of doubt it. And I bet Smash 4 gets an enhanced port, like a Game of the Year edition sort of thing. Um, Mario Maker would be harder. Um, really can't think of anything like super great sales-wise that uh, would be impossible to come over. Um, really can't. I like my Nintendo Land, but uh, it's, it was not a big deal sales-wise, and it, uh, it's, it, there's no way it's coming over. Um, Game and Wario. Well, I really hope there's a cool um, WarioWare system, even if it's just traditional buttons completely. Um, even if there's no like interesting gimmicks, I don't know why the WarioWare team doesn't make a launch title for every game. Because like WarioWare has made whatever your hardware is, the WarioWare team always makes the absolute best use of it. Um, Game and Wario is a little disappointing, but I think that's more down to the structure of the game than to the actual team. I don't think the team got worse. Because um, Rhythm Heaven, it's the same team as Rhythm Heaven, right? And that's still great. Um, but yeah, overall, I really like it. It's it's what it needed to be. I uh, I have a little, I have some concerns. I, I I don't think it's absolutely perfect. But the thing about portable stuff is th there's always going to be trade-offs. So it's sounding like it's probably ARM. NVIDIA is doing, 
is it confirmed Tegra? I think it is. Um, which strongly suggests it's an ARM processor. Uh, I'm not sure if Tegra is, works with x86, but I would be surprised to see a portable x86 thing. I would be pleasantly surprised. It would make ports a lot easier. Um, speaking of ports, Unity and Unreal Engine 4 are confirmed, which I don't know why people are surprised by that. That's It would be outrageous for them not to have it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, so ARM could make ports a little more difficult, but if you're porting, you're getting a, a, a portable and a home console version. So for a lot of devs, a lot of devs really love the 3DS and Vita, you know, like indie devs, just because they can have, wow, it's, it's my game on a portable console. That's really cool. Or just on a normal console is also cool. But, you know, uh, until this gen, it wasn't a you know, significant option to get your game on a portable. Um, so it'd be really cool to just target one platform and uh, get all those benefits, and it should be should be stronger than the Vita from the uh, from the spec from those leaked specs. I mean, Nintendo said they're not going to do specs this year, but uh, if it's got a 720 screen, and I imagine it is, because like I was a little worried that the resolution was still going to be bad because the 3DS is uh, it's still 240p, which is wow. Um, but yeah. It should be pretty much pretty much exactly what I wanted from portable consoles to, to not entirely be portable consoles, I guess. But yeah, um, uh, there's still some open questions. I, I want to know about region locks. Um, I want to know... It, does ha it looks like it has a fan vent, so it probably has active cooling. Uh, I do want to know about battery life. But like I said, I mostly plan to play it at home consoles. So even if this turns out to be a disaster for people who want to play portable stuff, uh, I'll probably be happy at their expense because I'm probably not going to use it very portably. Um, but uh, it, it seems really cool. Um, a lot of people are excited about carts coming back. It's like, no, this is this is exactly the same as your 3DS and Vita have. Um, there's really nothing magical about carts. Not these carts, anyway. Um, the reason N64, SNES, and NES carts are fast, um, they're a really complicated thing with its own printed circuit board, um, EEPROM, and all of that crap. And it's really fast, but really expensive. Like, I think the buy-in for, like, an N64 cart was, like, over 50% of the price. It was... There was no question as to why things went over to the PS1, because discs were, like, a few cents, and carts were i believe tens of dollars uh, it was a lot um but yeah that, that's why those carts could instant load because they had a lot of hardware on board um game cards on vita and 3ds are just dumb flash memory and uh flash memory can be fast you know ssds are flash but um tiny cards like that you know that's more like an sd card that's not super high quality speed like um it's not gonna be instant loading you know you have a 3ds or vita probably maybe but if you don't those consoles do not instant load um loading times is actually one of the most unpleasant things of playing on 3ds and vita in my opinion uh, it's really noticeable and people are like oh you don't you don't have to install the games and that's you know installing games on ps4 is so terrible it's like i don't think those people have actually played on a ps4 um if you haven't played on a ps4 what you do is you Put the little disc in there. It uh, says it's installing. And in my experience, most of the time before I have grabbed my controller and sat on the couch, I am able to launch the game. I hear it's worse on Xbox One. So if people only have an Xbox One, maybe they have a bad impression of it. But uh, installing the game isn't going to be an option on a portable device anyway. So it's carts out of necessity, not because like carts are amazing and great, because they're really not. Um, somebody also said that, oh, wow, maybe they can install the update directly to the cart, which, no, that's not going to happen either. V the Vita doesn't do that. 3DS doesn't do that. Um, why would it do that? That would enable piracy. It, it may at least make it easier because, you know, carts are writable. So, you know, you every single game card you have is a flash cart. Um, and it would also mean that you're a, you could brick a game card. Like, that's... Way freaking scarier than Discrot. Like, Discrot is not going to affect 
basically any like non super mega uber collector that like survives a really long time along with their collection and like discrot really as a consumer product you know you're not really going to fall prey to that in any kind of reasonable scenario but um like having a power blip or something while a game is updating directly to its cart the only copy of its own data and bricking your cart would be ridiculous and also you really don't save a lot of space by updating directly to the card like that would be there's just absolutely no reason for that like that's just completely unreasonable and stupid um i don't know why carts people like make people this way every time there's mention of oh my gosh it's carts it's like have have you bought a portable console in the last um 15 15 years about um like carts don't have these magical properties they're just things that you have games on they're really nothing special but um they're nothing awful either but uh, i would prefer you know i prefer the the ps4 system it um it really works well the load times on ps4 are really pretty great i think a lot of people just get bad impressions because the xbox one does have some kind of weird problem where it takes a really long time to install and a lot of people's first ps4 game is bloodborne and don't get an impression of ps4's load times from bloodborne it has quite possibly some of if not the worst load times on the entire ps4 it's uh not saying it's a bad game but it's a, it's a doozy load time wise um yeah so i'm a little we're not gonna have instant load times on the switch that's that's what i'm trying to say um but i'm excited for it i definitely i want to see i want to see what games they have but i guess they're not going to tell us so i don't need to make another video until next year <laughs> i do wish nintendo would be a little less ridiculous in their you know pacing of these things but whatever well, that is my opinion on the situation. I uh, I hope you're either a little more enlightened or whatever, whatever you hope to get out of this video. I I, I don't honestly watch too much impressions, of, you know, other than like I want to get a general fee read of the market, but I don't tend to watch videos like this, which makes me ponder as to why I'm doing it. But I don't know. Thought I would, you know, I, I've wanted to do some more podcasts and article stuff. I, what I really want to do is more articles. So maybe I should stop recording this and go write an article. Sounds like a good idea. What do you think, Parker? What do you think? Yes. He responded by being very fluffy.